today we're gonna try to uh, educate my robot to skate a little bit uh, like bar swings so remember a few days ago we start uh, with this uh, video from Bart and we try to analyze his movement so I'm gonna try to uh, use this uh, this movement what is he doing now to um, to uh, make an animation in blender blender is a software where we can do um, animation and uh, so I will try to animate Bart with this uh, robot here so I hope it's gonna work and we will see how it's uh, how is the job done so let's go into blender for this so blender is this software and I will start you can see I can have different position for and I can navigate all I want in with my scaler here and I can correct some movement to make it skate uh, like I want so I think it's working if I go I need to take a, a one position on a bat and we're gonna maybe start the movement maybe somewhere maybe somewhere here so here my movement I started in you know, almost same position here so let's think I start my movement here and I want to try to kind of copy uh, what is it doing so let's go we have something that is quite similar here I think and let's look at the details it's not gonna be easy because my video always restart here but from this moment we try to uh, reproduce this moment okay so if everything's good you have no audio is it working good the audio now is the audio good please let me know is the audio working good when I'm here is okay okay please uh, let me know still in the chat if the audio is working or not it should be working there is no reason it's not okay so I'm going okay audio okay cool so I'm going in my software and here I want to start correcting the movement so you see there is many uh, little detail it's not so easy to do this animation and when I try to play it with the software you can see it's doing something like this so the timing will be super hard to manage it's almost impossible to reach the correct timing but uh, we give it a chance anyway and it's super nice because when I can do a good technique for the skater we have a chance to analyze later the technique in from every direction so if we can even see the skater from those kind of position or little even like a drone I can go everywhere I want so for me it could be quite interesting to see this so let's go into animation and I start I decide to start from this position so I had to design one position at the start and one position at the end so I start here and I use 50 image to go to back to the same position here so I already start you see I put a lot of key points to uh, figure out how to do it and to, uh, to create the animation and there are a lot of uh, little problem that I need to solve uh, if, for example uh, if I go very close to the skater the green line is um, the green line you see it's the floor and you see it's not perfect everywhere for this but uh, this is small details compared to what we want to reach the goal of this exercise is also to to look at many details on what how we can make this skater skate as good as possible okay so let's start I will start maybe from a front view it's a little bit easier here 
and we go frame by frame to look what's good or not and it's uh, also very hard remember the other day i told you like when bart is bringing back his leg behind he use this also use the energy of this leg to make a movement of his body weight uh, body weight transfer this is what i tried to reproduce look at his right leg here this is the right leg here look how we bring back the right leg and after this how all the body weight is moving to the outside for a glide this is very important movement in the technique he bring back the legs and then he glide to the outside at this moment so it's not really a double push this part because to make a double push we would need more action from the right leg here i would need this uh, left leg actually to move more to the inside so i could create this maybe uh, we could do this little more but it's it's maybe too hard at the moment i'm look what i'm looking is also the position of uh, the left skate here i need to look if it's open or not so from a down view like here i can see the skate not super easy to put it good but i'm beginning with this software a bit so i'm learning so you can see it's a little bit open here compared to the green line and it's um it's a moment that is happening always during the double push and you you have to open a little bit the skate you don't want to open too much for example if i had done this not really what i want so you want to keep it open but not so much actually okay so he's bringing back his legs it's a little bit strange movement but i will try to correct later the knee is not really in good position but here you can see the ankle is little in closed position ready to land so i try to simulate this moment here with this skate it's like already close to the inside so it can do a good landing so it's already in a boom 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 closed position it's a little bit closed position and this is something what not i don't want to move this now so you see little close position now okay so maybe we will correct little bit those detail a uh, little later or so and if you look at the mov movement here also it's a little bit strange but we can see still he bring back the leg and he move the body weight to the other direction so it's not so badly done already and then it's the landing of the skate and here we can clearly see how i like to land the skate for me it's very good when the skate can land like, land like this with the front wheels first i really try to make this landing you see the angle how the skate is before the landing it's landing front wheels first then going to flat this is really how i like to make the landing of the skate okay so this those are details but this landing is super soft here i try to reproduce this it's not exactly like what bad is doing but it's almost let's say we will upgrade this little bit in the movement okay let's look a little bit how the shoulders are moving also it's a robot so i choose to take a robot because it's super hard to animate a real human uh, things and um, when it's a robot it will be more also acting like a robot because i will i'm not specialist in all this but um, so i think it was easier to make it from a robot point of view so also some details we will have to correct is a lot into the timing okay so let's go from the start and we'll try to look at some problem if you see some problem that you think okay this is 
he's do not my robot is not doing so good let's go uh, and tell me something i have to to correct okay we look again the video from bart let's have a look again it will be a little bit slow on my computer and we try to simulate and look how he is acting now it's quite symmetric and he don't lift so much the leg see how high is the leg here let's say it's open and at the moment it's open here the skater the leg is here so let's go back into my software and try to reproduce this moment i think it's something like here so maybe my skater you have little too much uh, it was maybe a little before it was more something like this the foot is not really the same but at the skate uh, a little differently so let's try to correct this i was think he was doing something more no I want to correct this position from the skate and maybe it's this movement yeah, so but at the skate little more like this I think not even like this maybe a little higher it was maybe something like this he was doing still not perfect and uh, this direction also it was maybe more like this let's go back oh, i have to move this up now so it's not very easy to create those animation this one i don't want to move because um, it's a lot of every time i move something it creates some uh, other change and maybe not so bad and also the proportion of my skater is not like real so i think it was not so far from something like this not so far it's maybe not so much what i could correct also so he's doing this bring back his leg and then he move that was good and here yeah, i have to change this point again because then it was not correct i already had a lot of key points so it will be a bit strange but good okay here what i can see also remember yesterday and the day before i told you it's quite nice to land um the skate under the hip and here my skater is landing maybe too much uh in the middle of the hip and not on the under the the right hip so i will try to maybe correct this part so i think it's probably here i think it's this skate and let's try to move this more here i see how it's gonna do So because he's landing now a little more under his hip, the right hip, little, it could be even more, I think, he have more chance to apply, um, he have more chance to apply some kind of glute double push, okay? So I try to look in different options if it didn't change too much the technique because i had many many points here it's good and now he could apply his inside double push not so easy to look let's 
try to see what's going on now. So from here you see he's kind of ready to attack to make a double push. He's doing this little bit. You see on the ground compared to the green line he's taking a little bit of ground and then his body weight will move to the outside when he brings back his leg. Okay. Uh, one question from uh, Skatergraphy. You already had some question yesterday and a question also from Ayal. Ayal. I think that Bart is pushing his knee more to the outside of the push. So probably, and I think that is a little bit what I try to correct, because your question was uh, already five minutes ago. Um, can you use the frame of the video as the background reference in Blender? Do you use that as a database for animation? I have no idea about this question. I'm just beginning with Blender, so beginner with Blender, so I need to learn a lot more. With ice skating, the angle of the skate on the ice is very important. The smaller the angle, the more pressure you have on the skate. How important is it on the inline? So that's a very good question. So let's go into this. I will show you this detail from the animation. So I need, and I will explain what I mean by this. So let's take this moment. And the question of um, skatography, I think, if I understand good, it means that the more angle there is uh, like this, so you see now my skate between the ground and my skate, it's uh, more close. Okay, I, I put it on purpose a little too much. Before was like this. I need to get maybe a better, which should give it maybe a better side push. To say this but here if my skate would be more like this on the ice I would get more grip more pressure to push okay I think that's what the uh, skatography is meaning on inline it's not true actually it's a different story because uh, the wheels react differently than the blade so you want uh, to have a more classic angle like this okay on the on the inline you don't want to be too, um, you don't want to be too uh, closed angle. You don't want to have this too much for the inline. You want something more, a little more straight, okay? And you have to adapt this. So actually on my picture, it could be a little more for inline. It could be maybe more, a like, little more like this, but not too much breaking between this and this. So maybe I go back here and I will try to draw if I'm a little bit lucky I can hide, add a white board white board is here okay and then I mean this line from here to here and the knee to here you see this angle here it must not be too broken. It has to be a little broken like this, but not too much. Okay. If it's more broken, then it's a problem uh, in the technique. If it goes more like like this, I think it's more a problem in the in the technique. So don't do this too much. But on the ice, it's quite good. I have many coach telling me that you get more pressure in the ice if you do this. On inline, it would be the opposite. If you do this too much actually you will lose some pressure because uh, the wheels will talk if you put the pressure line with the leg more or less okay so you don't want to get this angle too much thanks for the question that's a very nice detail that's really the kind of detail i want to reach uh, with those video okay so let's go and try to correct i don't remember exactly what i was correcting before now look at the landing always Try to make it flat. You see my skater is extending his leg, his left leg pretty much here. Maybe maybe too much compared to what Bard is doing. 
and Bart would come back with a easier movement here. Here it's, I think it's a bit extreme. This also probably Bart bring the knee more direct to the inside, more like this, I think. Still, he's not doing this with his right leg behind for sure. He's more like this also, and he's doing also a little more like this compared to me, let's say. It's very hard with my robot to correct this part actually, because then uh, I have to move this after. And he, he has very big feet actually, <laughs> big, big frame, big foot. Uh, not easy to correct and let's try to look how it is now from this uh, those little change I see a problem the knee is too late here not so bad for the rest. I like the landing always. Okay, I have one more question from uh, Yeld Botanbal. I don't know how you say your name, sorry. Can you show the movement of the lower back in relation to the hip? How this affect balance and muscle strain in the back? So probably you want to explain, I'm not sure of what you really mean, but I think I understand maybe movement of this little part here, yeah, this little dance movement, I guess. I think this is what you mean. And it could also be movement probably like this, that is meaning. Okay, those little hip movement. Um, many coach you will hear that, that they tell, Hello from Colombia, nice to have skater from Colombia to follow the, the channel also. So you have many coach that will spoke that can spoke about this movement and they, they will try to tell you not to move the hip and i also say even in yesterday video it's not good to move the hip to move the hip and have movement it's not that we cannot have any movement but if you have big movement it's very hard to um, to control the landing okay so i will show you a little bit the influence of the hip movement on the landing for example first so i will go at just before the landing of the left leg and let's take a profile view so here you see my landing will be almost perfect he's very ready to land i really like how we're gonna put uh, the skate uh, here but if i move too much my hip so i think it's gonna be this movement He's just moving his hip, so it's not what I want. So I will try to find what animate, maybe the lower back, maybe this. No, it's not a real, real movement, but let's try this. Also not this movement. So I'm not sure my animation is able to understand this. Maybe I should connect correctly the leg to here, but basically in real life, if I move this, if my hip go up here, my foot would go up also here. My skater is very flexible, it's very good, because he don't really adjust his foot when his hip is moving. So basically he is a pro skater when he do this. You see, I have a little movement. If I bring some movement in my hip, he can correct it mainly, he will correct the movement mainly in his knee and not in the landing. So that's a very good point. The default of many skater would be that when this go up, which is a good movement to do to help for the push, this movement here, it, it's really, you load lot of power in your hip when you do this. Okay, 
especially at this moment it could be good for the um, it could be good for the push on the right leg so i will go let's go i think here i have to go on the push on the right leg so here yeah, now he's doing the push on the right leg if i want it if i want to do very good for my skater i would mark this moment here and during the push till maybe here the hip should move a little bit like this so you see the hip should move a little bit like this to help to help for the push that would be a really good move but it's like a small move you don't want to do this too much if it's too extreme it doesn't work also but this little movement at the hip here is quite important okay so let's say we correct this for the right push so now i need to find my left push and do the same so it's basically here here i have a point and then here i will move it the other way okay you can see what is he doing now he's pushing and boom he's, you see the hip is a little bit moving here like he's moving down <coughs> he's moving down on the left part during the push and this is quite cool to do so after i go back because my animation has a point like this whoops not what i want to do okay so what else can we correct let's say uh, let's talk about the head I will try to do something with the head position I don't know if it's this maybe no it's not the head movement maybe the head is this animation here yes okay so how where you look Many people, they will fail to look a lot in front, for example. So I don't like to do this too much. If I have to look too far in front, for example, if my head would be, many coach, they told me always, hey, you have to look, you have to look to the up like this. So depend on how is your back construction. So if your back is round back like mine, I have a kind of round back when I skate, then it's super hard to look up like this it, it, because it will create too much pressure in those uh, cervical bones here and it's quite painful so I like more to stay like this and I will move my eyes more in front and my vision my vision will be more in this area then so I go on my whiteboard I try to delete this let's say my vision here would be in this area at this moment and then uh, i try to draw a line but not easy okay i try to look kind of there a little more in front it's enough for me it's enough to look this direction and i can avoid the crash i can hear if i want to hear what's happening more in front i can really um, hear also the noise and if there is a problem I have enough time to react but I like more to be in this position because if like I say if my head is too much like this then I would have pain in my back if you are a skater and your back is more flat it's no problem to really move the head more like this it's much easier but only if you have really a flat back it's okay but if you really also stay like this then it's not so so good because when your head is like this basically uh, you don't get a lot of information you got information how, on how you land your skate how you take outside edge but you cannot take information about the tactic and the other skater in the pack so it's not so so good to put your head like this also if you look about uh, let's take a technical moment on I hope it's gonna work let's say I go on my push here my skater is pushing 
and I will explain you how I will try to explain the consequence when we are too low or too high. So I just need to find the right part to animate, which is definitely not easy here. Or maybe I need uh, hmm, maybe a different mode. Maybe this mode, yes. Okay, so I'm on my skater. He's pushing to the side. Quite good. Almost, you see, almost all the wheels are to the ground. But if my hip, not what I want, this is not the hip here. I need to find the right place, maybe this one. I think this, oh, still not. So maybe here, I'm not sure. So, oh no, it's select all, that's why. I want to select only one part, but I, and I'm not sure it's working. Okay. sure it will work no I cannot work it sorry I wanted to show like if I bring my hip up I don't know why you don't want to do this edit mode maybe no full mode no okay so I don't know how to change this again but um, I will try to find later so let's go on to the aerodynamic part maybe this is easier to manage so here this is also a hip movement that could influence, but it's not this one I want to show. This one, maybe. No, it's not always easy. There is so many, yes, there are so many information. I try to go back to what I had before. Okay. So I wanted to show you like the consequence of bringing the upper body position more up. Not this also. I struggle to find the right animation. Maybe this, okay, this is maybe what I'm looking for for a while. Yes, okay, this was the one I look for. So I wanted to show you that if I flex more or if I flex less on my legs, the consequence on the skate. So if I can bring my skater more down, it will create more pressure on my skate, okay? If my skater go more up, so we say like, on the ice, we want to be super low position, almost, let's say, almost like this. Then it's much easier to extend the legs. We can push more distance, more far here. Yeah. But on inline, if we do this, basically, we will just kill the quadriceps uh, very fast. So it's better. I recommend to stay a little higher like this. For me, it's, it's, it's enough compared to the push we have here because of the target theory or the power box. Remember about this, we don't need to push so, so far. Okay, imagine that the, the blue circle you can see here, it's let's say the best part of the double push of the, um, the power box. If the skater here, if this skate is outside the box, the push is less effective. So basically till here, the push would be good. And then it starts to be less good when it's out of this box. This is what you you can understand from uh, basically from this part. And of course, I love this. I think it's good. Yes. So there are consequences. You see, I didn't activate the arms. They stay in the position. So it's a little bit funny. Of course, you don't have to skate like this. And But um, here, it's enough to be flexed like this, in my opinion. Okay. Could be good enough.
let's go back to the animation a little bit I think I destroy a little bit the movement here yeah. so something are more unrealistic now what you can see good what I like here this is a, a very important moment for me in skating that I like a lot here let's go to the whiteboard I like that here is the hip to the ground you see as long as your body weight is outside of your skate here it's my favorite moment in pushing it's the double push is in this part here between the blue circle and the skate and this is the most powerful moment in skating okay one more question do you have a leg extension when doing the inside push so if we have a leg extension in the inside push so it's uh, a lot about remember the video I make about the double push so you have two ways or three ways to do the double push if you want to have a full extension of the leg on the inside so let's say here my skater I will try to animate this it will not be easy but I will try to do it I need to go back in this mode then okay and find maybe the best picture almost for this so here my skater we have if you do the glutes double push basically it will do more or less this movement is pushing with this leg to the inside okay and this is the glute double push when you walk like this and it's not creating you see he pushed to the inside but he never get a full extension of the leg like this oh, hopefully to get a full extension of the leg if, if my leg is full extended here you will see that from front you will get a crazy position and I'm not sure we really reach those moments so often when we skate or we are maybe in trouble okay so let's bring back to something the glutes double push is doing this to the inside okay if you want to do your double push with a leg extension so that means using your quad quadriceps then you are more at this moment I hope I can create the movement if I'm a little bit lucky then at this moment basically you will do this okay at this moment you would do this so that's more the quadriceps double push from here to here and it's the uh, the one you see most of the time people would be here and they would pu they would push they will not totally go only up they also would like I guess to go a little bit to the side to the side at the same time I cannot create this animation from there but the quadriceps double push would go up here boom okay and then you apply the force when you're on the outside edge okay you have to you need edge to get the to create speed at this moment if your body weight is over your skate you don't create speed okay so make sure you're on the outside edge you're falling to the outside before making the leg extension here and it's quite uh, effective to do it's a very good to uh, to get rhythm I, I really like to do the double push like this it's not my favorite moment but I like to do it like this to get rhythm in my technique okay you understand the difference and if maybe I can manage to do um, and just doing the third way to do the double push would be with using the body weight that would be when you transfer the body weight like this there is no use he don't use uh, the quadriceps he don't use the glutes he's like more or less using the um, end of the push to bring the body weight like this so that's what Bart would, would do he would go from here to here using the end of his push and then normally what Bart like to do is when he bring back his leg quick to the inside then he would move all his body weight 
So he bring back his leg and then he move all the body weight to the outside. So look at the blue circle, how he's moving from left to right now. And he's using this free leg for this. Nolan is using a lot of his free legs in a different way, but he's also using the free leg to create movement. So Bart would go straight and move his body weight to the side. And Nolan Bedia, for example, would do something different. Not easy to reproduce now with my model, but I will try to. So Nolan would do something like, um, maybe like he bring back the legs, oops, he bring back the leg, but he will not move his body weight now. He will bring back the leg and then he will try to bring it li little bit to the front. And at this moment, when he bring back his leg to the front, then he would move all the body weight to the side. Okay, so quite complex. I destroy a little bit my model. I don't know if I can go back and go to something that is good again because I probably destroy a lot the technique now. Let's have a quick look if it's not too complex now. Oh, it's not looking so, so bad. Okay, do you have any other question? Uh, what is this high tech? What happened to the paper scaler? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what is the paper scaler, but um, okay. Um, we didn't really learn my scaler how to scale light bar swings, but still uh, we give him some information. We teach uh, quite, I think quite a lot on about uh, always, I always go back to the landing because for me it's so important, remember? I want the landing almost flat here. Then here you have the double contact moment. My both skates are on the ground and they are both pushing. This I could do it quite good here. So there is the double contact and this is super powerful moment. Then I have to go back to the beginning of the animation. Then using the comeback of the leg to go to the side and transfer the body weight. Then this moment, we can talk a little bit about this to finish the video. I think it could be quite good here. It's quite nice view to understand how the body weight. Uh, I'm looking on the side because my phone is here and I can see if there are any some question actually. I will put it here. Maybe it's easier. So here you probably can see from this view, we can see very good how the body weight is falling to the inside. And this is super important. If you manage to do this on inline or only on ice, both is the same case, I think. It's if you can manage to find to fold the body weight in the right timing here, then you save a lot of energy. This is the beginning of the fall is here. Here my gravity center is over my skate. Maybe I try to draw it. Not really exact, but uh, let's say more or less so you see the body weight is let's say more or less over my gravity center and now i'm falling so all this moment is just the fall this is the fall part okay so i fall of course i didn't want to draw this but now it's the fall and then from here if you use the fall of your body weight good, then you can start to push. And then you use a little bit the push. And then from here, the push, it's enough. You hold the skate, you land. You start to put your body weight on the skate would just land. And the, what you finish with your push is basically to activate a movement from your upper body. So the robot is not doing as good as Bart yet. But the end of the push, which is too long here, should be to move the body weight to the outside. Then I try to put a little double push here. Not super clear. Body weight transfer to the outside. And then here we will see again the fall from the inside again. 
almost same on inline and ice when you can use this fall this little fall moment it's very important then come the perfect moment for the push then the landing little bit late in the landing in my video uh, one more question from Alex Capo. I have a question comparing double push to normal push. How much power in your mind percentage do you get from a normal push compared to a double push? Um, I think I spoke a little bit about this yesterday already in the live, but let's go again because it's quite some important question. It's quite uh, good. Um, if you push only with a classic technique, when you do your outside push, so basically with the leg like now, this leg, you will have to push with more effort because your speed will go up when you push or it will keep and when you just glide, your speed go down. I will try to go there, yeah. So you push, your speed go up, you glide, your speed go down. You push, your speed go up, you glide, your speed go down. So it costs, you need more power to maintain an average speed because you are pushing like this okay with double push but double push during the gliding moment you don't you um, don't lose so much speed so you can do your classic push your double push so your speed is more regular all the way so you can split the energy from one push into push so instead of pushing let's say uh, 100 kilo for 0.3 seconds, you can push 100 kilo in uh, 0.2 seconds on one leg and 0.2 seconds on the other leg, or on the, and more or less it makes your speed more flat. Okay, so by this you save a lot of energy with a double push. If you have to do classic push, uh, you have to put more power in every push to maintain your speed. So not my best explanation of the day, but. Uh, I think you you got it quite good. Otherwise, just go back to the double push video and to the yesterday live. I think it's almost uh, one hour. It's 50 minutes uh, from today. Thank you uh, for following this. We can go back quickly to bad video because we couldn't teach my robot how to skate like Bart. But uh, we got a lot of details, and it's always nice to see uh, how Bart is doing. He's uh, for sure the most efficient at the moment on the double push. So it's a good example. I uh, will need more time to, um, to understand uh, this. Thank you for following again uh, this video, and uh, probably I do another one uh, later in the week. Not tomorrow, I guess, but I think next one. I will try to do a um, video explaining how I was training, how I was uh, doing the programmation of my training, when I, what I was doing in winter, what I was doing during the season, and how I was training before World Championship. I will try to go on different topics, go a little bit away from the technical part, and go a little more into some uh, physical conditioning uh, training part. Thank you for following, and see you in a few days. Bye-bye.